All right, good evening and welcome to the Heartland Township Planning Commission meeting of August 27th. We'd like to begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Keith, would you take roll, please? Sure. Larry Fox? Here. Jeff Newsom. Here. Uh, I'm here. Uh, Joe Polaney. Be here in a minute. Okay. <laughs> Sue Grissom. Here. Mike Mitchell. Here. Tom uh, Murphy. Here. Okay. All right. Thank you. Next up, item four approval of our meeting agenda. So moved. Support. Motion from Commissioner Mitchell, second from Commissioner Newsom. Are there any changes? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Next up, item 5A, approval of our July 30th, 2015 meeting minutes. So moved. <laughs> a motion to approve from Commissioner Grissom, a second from Commissioner Newsom. Any changes? No. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Next up, item 5B, approval of our August 13, 2015 meeting minutes. Move it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give it to Murphy in a second. Okay, we have motion to approve from Commissioner Murphy, second from Commissioner Voigt. Any changes? Just want to note I gave the planning director of one spelling correction on that. Didn't change the contents. <clears throat> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Next up, item six, call to the public. Anyone this evening? <laughs> Good evening. Hi. Uh, my name is uh, Todd Lukander, and I'm here representing uh, Evergreen Clark, the development at the corner of uh, M59 and Clark. And I just wanted to uh, publicly uh, say that I wanted to invite our neighbors that live to the north in Matthew Lane, Matthew Court, uh, uh, Anya, and Laura, I think it's Lorena uh, Lane to meet us next Wednesday here at 6 o'clock until 7. And uh, we have a genuine desire to talk with them and uh, learn what their thoughts are about our development so we can take them into account as we develop our final plans. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi. How are you? Good. <coughs> All right, thanks. My name is Mike Bell, and I live at 2360 Matthew Court. And I'm going to go down the floor as usual. Don't forget anything. Um, these past few weeks, we, the residents of Heritage Meadows, have been coming to you with our concerns about our future. We have been asked not to repeat ourselves and to keep our complaining to three minutes or less. I am sad to say that I do not run out of new concerns to talk about. I initially came here to talk about the possibility of flooding in the Monkey Mob site, but something else to say in the front seat. I brought in pictures to help illustrate what I'm referring to. The KFC is complete. The men have been working very hard to finish the, pro the project. They've been working so hard that they forget to go home at night. The other night was so loud that it kept me awake. My windows were closed and the heavy curtains were drawn. Since I wasn't getting any sleep, I decided to walk to where the sound was coming from. It was the KFC. My husband, Fred, walked over to the workers and asked them to stop so we could sleep. I stayed behind in someone's backyard and videotaped the commotion. Fred returned a few minutes later. The workers said that they would not stop and that they were not aware of any ordinances that would make them stop. This was at 12 o'clock in the morning. The ordinance that I'm referring to is Ordinance 78, the one I keep mentioning each time I come here. I brought a copy for you. And it states on Section 7, Noise, Number 3, Titles, Instruction or Repair. To paraphrase, operating or permitting the operation of any tools or equipment used in construction shall cease after 8 p.m. such that it is not audible on any other premises. The next day, I called the township to complain. I was informed that other people had also called in. My husband went in to the township to also complain. Dave from planning told Fred that the six-foot-tall burn would keep out the light and the noise. Well, I'm here to tell you that it didn't work at all. 
I stood in the residents' backyard, and the back of their home was completely lit up. I could see into their home. I lived two blocks away and couldn't sleep. Imagine how these homeowners must feel. Dave further explained that he would go to the site and talk with them about the noise and to make sure the berm is six feet high. I've since gone back to see the berm again and to see if any changes have been made. The berm is only three feet high and you can still see the homes because most of the natural foliage that was to be left behind, and I quote, along with the berm and the extensive landscaping provided should successfully screen the parking lot utilities. But it has been removed and turned into dirt with some gravel. Why was the berm not put all the way along the back of the parking lot too? One of the photos shows that there is a driveway exit to the back of the lot. Is there going to be an alley put in there for new businesses? A as you can tell from the photos, headlights from cars will now light up the homes even more. Is this what we have to look forward to with the gas station? All right, thank you. Anyone else? Good evening. Hello. My name is Danielle Longenbrook. I live at 11012 Matthew Lane. Thank you for the opportunity to address the Planning Commission. I've been here before, and I'm here again to express my disapproval of the proposed plan to construct a gas station convenience store Dunkin' Donuts and Baskin Robbins in the complex at the corner of M59 and Clark, which will only be a few hundred feet from my home and a neighbor's home right beside me. I'm still asking for a noise study and light study, and I'm asking all of you to not allow this construction, if at all possible, and if it must be allowed, and I'm asking you to do everything in your power to balance the interests of my fellow 83 Heritage Meadow subdivision owners <coughs> and the future homeowners that may someday come to live across Clark Road from Heritage Meadows subdivision and a commercial operation whose goal is to keep construction costs as low as possible and to keep the cost of a buffer between the commercial property and the residential properties that back up to the property as low as possible. In short, I'm not convinced that one of the goals of the commercial property is to exist harmoniously with the nearby residences, but I hope that I'm mistaken. I know that your jobs are thankless and you have to often sit during public comments and bite your lip, uh, tongues. And I know that you do your best to understand the feelings and opinions of impacted homeowners such as myself, so I do appreciate that. I do not feel that any planning commission member or Heartland Township trustee should take comfort in approving the proposed construction on the basis that the property has been zoned commercial for at least the last 40 years. While that's true, I think what's also true are the comments that homeowners have made when they built and bought homes in Heritage Meadows. They were aware that commercial business would eventually come along M59 and back up to the south side of the south. But I don't feel any of us ever imagined there would be a gas station at this corner. If this gas station, convenience store, restaurant, and I use the term lightly because Dunkin' Donuts and Baskin Robbins are not restaurants, comes, then the Planning Commission, the Board of Trustees, and everyone who lives in Heartland Township have failed to look forward and stop this from happening. When Meyer was built, and there was apparently an agreement that no gas station would be built on any of that land except for the Meyer gas station that was going to be built, it was then and there that um, someone fell asleep at the wheel, including myself, and we should have taken steps to protect the residents of Heritage Meadows and any other um, residential um, properties that will come along Clark Road. Zoning laws are not sacred. Zoning laws are changed all the time. There are wetlands that are said to be protected, but it seems that when a business comes and wants to build on a wetland area, the wetlands suddenly are not so sacred and they can be filled in. And what was once wetlands, something that doesn't make money, seems to be easily sacrificed to make way for something that will make money. Someone, including myself, didn't take enough steps and didn't try to change the zoning laws or create a township <coughs> ordinance that would have prevented a gas station within 500 feet of residential homes. That would have been all that was needed to avoid the current situation, but we all didn't look ahead in the master plan to see and take steps to prevent something like this that will so negatively impact residents in my position. I don't think it serves a purpose, and it's... I don't think it serves a purpose to tell homeowners like me who pour out our hearts to you and who beg and plead and give facts and opinions and reasons why this construction should not come, that we should have known this would happen when we bought our properties because it was zoned commercial for the last 40 years. It, I understand that that's a point, but it tends to show a lack of compassion and understanding for our shoes and where we are. Yes, we expected commercial, but I don't think any of us predicted that there'd be a gas station in that corner. Um, lastly, I'd like to say that... Um, uh, I'm not in favor of a policy, and I don't know how this works, so I could be speaking out of turn, that allows planning commission members to also serve as trustee or as board members. I think it's efficient, and there's probably a sharing of information that happens, and while there's nothing inherently wrong with that, I just think that even if there is no conflict of interest, the appearance of a conflict of interest um, is there, whether or not there is actual 
actually any conflict of interest. I think they're two different entities that serve two distinct purposes, and I think that there should be just different people because I think the township trustees rely heavily on the recommendations and the approvals that the planning commission gives to them. So thank you for listening. It's my birthday today, and my birthday wish and prayer is that this planning commission and the township board does something to stop this construction because there's not a buffer big enough or thick enough or tall enough to prevent hearing and seeing and smelling what this construction is going to bring to the corner. Thank you. Have a nice night. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. If you could get your name. Uh, Eugene Sobieski. Okay. I live at uh, 2313 Lorena Lane in Heritage Meadows. Okay. So um, comments from my neighbor who couldn't be here today. Okay. If I could start with those names. Sure. Um, yeah, his, is, uh, his name's Rob Wisniewski, and he lives at 2325 Lorena Lane. As long as you speak into the mic, All right. we'll be good. All right. Um, so he had several points that he'd like you to consider. Uh, first was the gas station uh, being required to install enhanced vapor reduction nozzles like they use in California. Um, and the gas station is in, within 100 feet of a house, and surprised that homeowner would not consider a lawsuit. Um, how many traffic deaths are allowed on Clark Road? If the state will not move the light, then Clark Road needs to close at M59. Why has no one checked the height of the berm at the new KFC? Clearly it's under the six-foot mark. And thank you. hope you understand why we are concerned, especially when we constantly raise our concerns and consistently attend these meetings. Um, my comments were that um, I've attended several of these board meetings, or uh, several of the board meetings, the Planning Commission, over the past few months, the residents of Heritage Meadows have attended each of these meetings and presented their concerns regarding the proposed gas station at the corner of Clark Road and M59. During each of these sessions, the board have demonstrated apathy and an inability or lack of, or lack of willingness to address the concerns of the constituents and enforce the township ordinances. During one of the meetings when a concern was raised regarding increased traffic, one of the board members mentioned, if you think that's bad, you should see where the traffic where I live. That's not the statement of a leader. A leader recognizes the issues with past planning decisions and says, what can I do to make sure that doesn't happen in the future? How do I and this leadership body act in a way to learn from previous mistakes so they do not happen again? What can we do to enable this township and its res residents to enjoy a bright and successful future? Um, the berm behind the KFC is supposed to be six feet tall, not three feet tall. This was brought to the attention of the board, and the berm is still three feet tall, and the KFC is now open for business. The concern is that this was not addressed, and the requirement was not enforced. Is this the same type of six-foot berm that will block light and noise from the gas station when it goes in? And the statements of the board and lack of action are documented examples that demonstrate that they've become proverbial for Corporate generals of World War I, safe behind lines with no regard for the safety and well-being of the constituents. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may. Yep. So I'm Dave Campbell. I live on Woodmark Court in uh, Heartland Township. Um, I just want to note it in the, in the record that... Uh, you know, my office and myself are, are um, repeatedly being misquoted uh, in these public comments. Uh, things that, that I are, are, are being said to being said uh, are not things that I've said. Um, it, it frustrates me when things that I did not say are then presented uh, to, to this body and to my township board. Uh, so I just want that noted for the benefit of the Planning Commission um, that uh, everything that uh, is said uh, to have come from me uh, is not always accurate. Thank you. And one other point, I think, yes. there was a comment made about the township trustee, which I am, mm -hmm. serves on the planning commission. That's by statute. State statute. State statute. So, um, again, you know, it's important to do your homework before you make any allegations or come and talk to me. I'd be glad to tell you a little bit more about what I do and why I'm here. Um, I don't think it's, again... Um, fair to, to, to we haven't been able to respond because it's hard to respond to questions when it's fraught with a lot of emotion. We have we are citizens in this community as well. We look at the whole <coughs> picture of the community and what goes on in the community. 
a lot of the decisions we deal with are also decisions that have been made before. Um, and if we had a magic wand on a lot of things, a lot of other things wouldn't be around as well. Uh, however, we have an, a responsibility to do uh, as well. And it's also hard for us to respond individually, or I mean as a body, to questions because at the end of the day, the property owner has certain rights. And comments made by us that are not proper and in terms of how we express them can be used against us in basically a lawsuit. So to the extent that you've been uh, upset that this body has not specifically responded to each and every one of your questions and concerns, that's what the purpose of the public hearing is for, one. Number two, we have a planning director. And to the extent you have questions regarding how the process and what the decision making is, the planning director is here. But we also live in a community, we will live by the ordinance, we will look at these, uh, every plan as we do, we will look at them in accordance with the law and what we're required to do under the law. And we do not rubber stamp corporations. And I beg you to go back and review the minutes from this body for the last five to ten years and see the kind of work that we've done with respect to uh, uh, requiring the, the applicants that come before this board what they're required to do. And I would agree and I just would like to add that <coughs> while you may have not gotten your answers, we haven't got a submittal back. So your constant attendance to this meeting is your right and you are allowed to come here and say what you wish to say, but we have not had one meeting, one conversation with the applicant. They came to the public hearing, they heard what you had to say, you said it, they've heard it, let's see what comes back. Okay? So, what I'd like to do is close the call of the public and move on. There is no discussion. We are under the public hearing. The call of the public is closed. So we were on item 8A, which is site plan application number 524, turning into softball complex, the revised plan. This was at our meeting a month or so ago. What I'd like to do is turn it over to our planning director. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So you are correct. The uh, project that's before the Planning Commission this evening <coughs> is one that the Planning Commission saw back on uh, the meeting on July 30th. That's when we had a public hearing for this pro proposal. Uh, the reason that there was a public hearing is because what is being proposed is considered a special land use in the zoning district that is, is being proposed. Um, particularly, the applicant is proposing a private recreation area on property that is zoned CA Conservation Agriculture. And when you have a special land use such as that, uh, the requirement is that you have a public hearing before this Planning Commission. and the Planning Commission has the option to uh, take action either at that meeting of the public hearing or at a subsequent meeting, such as tonight. Um, and if the Planning Commission does take action, the action would be a recommendation to the Township Board for special land use approval. And then the Township Board ultimately has the authority to approve any special land use such as this. So what the Planning Commission has in front of, uh, in front of them tonight is a revised submittal based on a lot of the uh, comments that the applicant heard, uh, both from the public and from this Planning Commission at the meeting on July 30th. Uh, to the applicant's credit, they certainly took those comments that they heard uh, uh, seriously and they made some significant changes to the site plan uh, in order to address those concerns. Um, the planning department has submitted a review letter dated August 20th of 2015. Um, where we go through not only the site plan requirements for a pro proposal such as this, but also the special land use requirements for a pro proposal such as this. Um, we go through our typical uh, uh, review of, of all aspects of the site plan, the lighting, the landscaping, the use itself, the, the parking lot design, the stormwater detention. Uh, all of those things get reviewed by not only the planning department, but where applicable, the township engineer, the township's uh, department of public works, and the township's fire marshal. Um, the applicant, as I mentioned, has made some significant revisions, and particularly, the applicant has removed the uh, lights for the softball fields that are being proposed for this. Uh, so these fields are no longer being uh, illuminated, and I know that was a, a big concern uh, on the part of a lot of the neighboring property owners that the four softball, the four uh, outdoor softball fields being proposed uh, would have the 
illumination that would light up the sky and light up their backyards, and and uh, the applicants heard those concerns and has removed those lights. Uh, another one of the concerns of the neighboring property owners was the proximity of the proposal uh, to their properties, and with it, the the, the noise um, and uh, kind of the taking away of the the rural character. Uh, what the applicants done to address that is essentially picked up the entire site and moved it 80 feet further east, closer to US 23. Um, what that does is that creates an additional buffer from the neighboring property owners, but also preserves another 80 feet of existing vegetation along the west side of the site. Um, further, uh, the intent being to further enhance the screening and the buffering from the neighboring property owners. The applicant has also uh, provided a better narrative of, of the use and its hours and its, its duration of operation and its, its seasons and how the outdoor athletic fields uh, uh, potentially do or do not overlap with the uh, the indoor facility uh, to give this planning commission a better sense of how this uh, facility would work on a year-round basis, um, what impacts it would have on, on, on traffic. Um, and so that's something that the, the Planning Commission can have a better handle on as they consider this, this revision. Um, what I haven't done thus far is actually give a very brief overview of what is being proposed. Uh, it is the four external softball fields uh, and the 60,000 square foot indoor training facility at the what is effectively the southwest corner of Clyde Road and US 23 on approximately 95, uh, a combined 95 acres that uh, are comprised of four properties. The three of those properties are zoned, as I mentioned, CA conservation agriculture and there is one small piece of property right at the corner uh, that is currently zoned general commercial. Um, as I mentioned the planning department has drafted a, a <coughs> review letter of the rise and submittal. The conclusion of that review letter is the uh, planning department is recommending that should the planning commission make a determination on a few issues uh, uh, such as uh, some deviations from landscaping requirements um, and parking requirements and a few other things. <coughs> the, if the planning commission makes those determinations that those deviations are acceptable then the recommendation of staff is that this planning commission forward this proposal onto the township board <laughs> with the recommendation for approval for the special land use. Um, but I would think a lot of the discussion of the Planning Commission this evening is uh, discussion on those items that still have a determination required. They are issues that the Planning Commission does have discretion to, to make a decision on. Um, the Planning Department has offered a uh, proposed motion language should the Planning Commission choose to uh, take any action. The applicant has provided, uh, as I mentioned, a substantial narrative of the cha changes they've made, and obviously they've got their team here tonight to, to speak to those changes. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions the Planning Commission may have, or if the Planning Commission so chooses, we can turn it over to the applicant and let them have an opportunity to uh, uh, give us an overview of, of everything that they've done since the last time they were here on July 30th. All right. Thanks, Dave. Well, good evening. Welcome. Um, we have a couple options. We can follow Dave's review letter if that works for you. The site plan review, that will get us through all the points maybe efficiently and and uh, make sure we don't miss anything. So if that works for everyone, we'll take a look at the site plan review letter starting on page 9 um, with the first portion of it really being the introduction and the meat of it starting at the bottom of page 10 and basically starting at 11. So we've got lot size, we've got requirements, you've met those, the frontage, you've met the lot width and all of those types of things. And probably the biggest one to talk about tonight, at least first, is the building setbacks. And was wondering if you could um, show us what you've done with this 80 feet and explain to the um, neighbors how that, uh, what it looks like. I'm Johnny Aslan from Aslan McLean Architectural Group, 4488 West Bristol Road in Flint. I'm going to um, bring this up on your screen and turn this over to Bill. <laughs> hey, Doug Scott from Roll Professional Services Company. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, John, we want to see what's on your screen. Is that what we're doing? I haven't put that up, but you're good. Yeah. And, and, and basically, as you've already alluded to, what we did is essentially we did pick the site up, move it 80 foot over um, to the east there to try and uh, maintain a lot of the natural wooded area there that's heavily wooded at, at the northwest corner. We've also gone through and added, I think it's about, okay. There we go. Um, sure don't. Yeah, we, we moved the entire site over 80 feet to try and maintain the natural wooded area up in here. We've also added, uh, I believe we added 20 
20 trees just to buffer this, this area. Those will be selectively uh, uh, placed out there just to prevent uh, any, any type of, uh, um, just, just to shield the, the, the existing property. We, we've also um, basically moved the detention pond a little bit uh, further north to try and keep that into the natural uh, um, bank that's there. Um, so I guess essentially that that's what we have done mm -hmm. as far as the uh, um, as far as moving the site. So. Right, and for the benefit of those that were here last time, a refresher, and those that are new to this project tonight, the setback on the west property line is by ordinance 15 feet, and they are at 300 feet. So they've moved it quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, any comments on the 80 feet? That's real good. Yeah, yeah, and they're, and they're still 183 feet um, set back on the east side, so it's still set back off the road. Um, so if there are no further questions on that, accessory building setbacks look like you've taken care of dumpster locations and building materials. <coughs> building height. Still within compliance, 35 feet maximum, 34 feet, 10 and 3 quarter inches. Can't get much closer. I'll be out there measuring, by the way. <laughs> um, lot coverage. There's really none specified, so we don't really have any issues there. Moving on over to page 12, we just talked about the dumpster. Um, the parking requirements. Dave, can you tip us off a little bit at what we're looking at here? Yes. So uh, we we did have to. Um, the, the zoning ordinance does not have parking requirements for a facility such as this. So the applicant provided uh, some parking calculations that, uh, when we looked into them, seemed reasonable to us. They're based on uh, you know the number of players and coaches and spectators per field divided by how many folks are, are going to show up per vehicle, um, and they provided more than sufficient parking to cover that, as well as if there were did ever happen to be an overlap of the number of, of the maximum capacity of the indoor building. If the indoor building is full and the fields are full and the bleachers are full, they still exceed the parking calculations uh, for that scenario, even though they've made it clear that there, there's not going to be an instance where the indoor facility and the outdoor fields are being used. It's always going to be it's going to be one or the other. Either the kids are playing on the outdoor fields or during the off season they're training in the indoor facility. So even though there's not expected to be an overlap between those two, the parking is still more than sufficient to cover it if ever that were to happen. And they have also provided, as you uh, can see, um, sufficient space for additional parking uh, along the east side of the proposed parking lot, if ever that need were to arise. Okay. I had a question on that, <clears throat> excuse me, the additional parking, if that should come to be. I noticed that there are islands here, much like maybe little landscaped islands. If, if the... Um, if the overflow parking lot is used or constructed someday, will there also be an island there to kind of break that up? Okay. Okay. Can it can it be added to the plan? Just, like, just as a future. Type? Yeah. Just yeah. Just because you do have it noted as future parking, and then maybe you could say future island also. They would. They, they would have. Well, it's it's not. It, it would make sense to do it now, but it's worth noting that if they did have to expand their parking lot, uh, that would be an amendment to their site plan, and, and they would be back here to get approval for that too. So, um, even if they didn't note it on this, they would. It would be something that would be caught on a revised site plan review, if ever that day were to come. Okay. Any other questions about parking? All right, barrier-free parking, we're fine. Parking lot, driveway, internal road setbacks. Um, there just are no issues there, no loading requirements. We're on page 13 now, access management, non-residential driveway standards. Dave, can we talk a little bit about the county and... We can. So uh, the what the applicant is proposing is one main point of public access on the west side of Clyde Road. Um, obviously, south of uh, of or excuse me, one point of public access off of US 23, old 23. 
south of Clyde Road. Um, boulevarded entrance. The Road Commission has looked at this proposed entrance. The Road Commission does have jurisdiction over old US 23. Uh, they've approved it for sight distance. They've looked at it in terms of uh, traffic mitigation, did an analysis of whether or not the traffic to be generated by this use uh, would warrant any off-site improvements, such as uh, providing a left turn lane or a bypass lane on old US 23. Uh, the traffic to be generated did not meet the Road Commission's warrants. The um, Department of Transportation, who has jurisdiction over US 23 and also the ramps on and off of US 23, uh, also looked at this proposal and looked at the traffic to be generated. And while I think anybody, in the, everyone in this room can recognize that the interchange of uh, US 23 and Clyde Road is not the optimal interchange design as it would be if it were to be built today, it's uh, you know it was the way it got built in 1962 or whatever year it was when 23 came through. Um, this proposal would not be the trigger to rebuild the Clyde Road and US 23 interchange. In other words, this applicant would not be obligated to uh, rebuild the ramps or, or otherwise alter the ramps based on the level of traffic that they're generating for their use. Um, and again, it's the that's the Department of Transportation's call uh, as it pertains to the ramps, and it's the County Road Commission's call as it pertains to old US 23. Uh, the other thing that the applicant has revised uh, since last time they came before this Planning Commission is they are proposing an emergency access off of Clyde Road. This would only be emergency for, again, fire, police, uh, ambulances, emergency services. This wouldn't be uh, something where they'd open a gate uh, to get everyone out quicker, uh, the, the public. This would only be for for emergency services access. And the county will be fine with that? They they will be. <coughs> Comments? You guys okay with all of it? Yeah. All righty. Um, landscaping and screening requirements. Maybe we should just... Since we've got to make opinions on all of them, Dave, do you want us to handle them by sections as presented in the letter? Or are we doing an overall? Well, we can try overall. Overall, the, the, the site certainly takes advantage of the existing vegetation to remain on the site. Um, if you bear with me, I'll get down to, I think it's page 8 that has the overall landscape plan. Um, so while the combined area of the property is 95 feet, um, this proposal is impacting certainly less than that and maybe more like a, a third of the uh, the existing site and the rest of the 95 acres would remain undisturbed. Um, so the applicant is seeking uh, uh, consideration by the Planning Commission of maintaining a lot of that existing vegetation in lieu of what we don't normally like to see which is cutting down old trees just to plant new trees. Um, however, the applicant is also proposing uh, a, a number of additional plantings uh, as, as the applicant mentioned along the west side to provide additional screening to the property owners uh, immediately adjacent to the west. There are some gaps in the existing vegetation there, and so what the applicant is proposing to do is uh, uh, kind of fill in those gaps with some additional plantings. Um, some additional plantings up along Clyde Road and also along, uh, along Old 23, and then the plantings both within the parking lot and around the parking lot, uh, uh, around the fields, around the detention base, and so on. Uh, when we go section by section of the landscape, requirements, you, the staff has noted that there are some deviations from a strict application of the standards, um, but typically those deviations are because the applicant is seeking to get credit for the existing vegetation to, to remain rather than, as I mentioned, cut down old stuff just to plant new stuff. Um, so the Planning Commission does have the authority to allow such deviations uh, if they agree that the natural vegetation um, satisfies the intent of the landscape requirements with respect to screening and buffering. Um, so as we go section by section, the Planning Department staff has noted where they're seeking those deviations, and the Planning Commission would have to make an overall determination that those deviations are acceptable um, because they meet the overall intent of our landscaping requirements. Okay. <coughs> Sue, do you have any um, comments on I landscaping? Just, just, I just thought we could go section through section, maybe sign off, because it, it okay. looks like in the letter it's 
to each section, we kind of have to say if we agree if it meets okay. the ordinance or not. All right. It's like it makes sense. All right. And there, uh, if I may, there are a few things that could be cleaned up, but I, I would think those are things that could be cleaned up uh, and reviewed administratively if we get to that point. Yep. All right. Well, then let's start at the bottom of page 13, the Greenbelt Landscaping. Any comments, Sue? You know, I, I think the way it's been supplemented and you're using the existing vegetation, we're feeding the intent of the green belt. That's, that's my take. Any other comments, Anybody thoughts? Else? Are you guys comfortable with that? Mm -hmm. All right, the foundation planning. Um, calculations on the plan appear to be incorrect. Material list does not specify heights, calipers, spreads as required. So as a whole, just even like looking at your plant list and your counts, you just what you're going to have to do is go back to the ordinance and just list out again those minimum sizes yeah. to show that you meet it. Cause yeah, we, we actually, we've based on this letter, we've done that. We've got another set that we can submit okay. for administrative. Okay. Yeah. So that'll clean up in a lot. We, we've sizes. added another table that... Uh, talks about the small shrubs and stuff like that sure. too. So, yeah. Okay. And all of these comments are going to be in the meeting minutes, which will translate to a revised plan. Which, as you say, Dave, could probably be handled administratively. That kind of thing, just, just, just a check to make sure we're meeting, you know, the ordinance sizes. That would be the Great. that would be the planning commission's call if they decide to get there. Okay. Um, any other questions, comments on foundation planning? Parking lot landscaping, another to-be-determined plant size issues. So that one I'd like to, if we could, just kind of look at, you have those that one sheet with your blow-ups of kind of like that center large uh, island in the middle of your parking lot. That one right there. Yeah, that one's, so that one there, kind of underneath the trees, you've got some gaps. And we don't, I guess we don't really know what's going on underneath some of those trees. Well, the, 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 int the intent is obviously to, 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 we're going to fill that in as much as possible, yeah. but we also don't want to get things right underneath the, the trees. trees. So, so, yeah, so, so I think we've... It looks like you can get a little bit closer. I mean, the intent is to kind of break up the parking right. lot, which is, right. and that's nice that you've got these larger islands, not mm -hmm. these little pieces here and there, but if you could just kind of fill them in a little more, one of the things we try to do is not just have areas of just pure mulch. Right, you know? right. And but, so I but I guess... You know, those trees are shown obviously a little bit more mature, and that, that's sure. probably where, you know, once they get fully grown and stuff in there, you're not going to get too much under, under that's foliage. That's true. It'll transition over time. At first, they're very little. You can get a lot, and then over time, they'll shade it out, the roots, mm -hmm. all of that. But right now, I think kind of one of the intent with those islands is to kind of break right. up, mm -hmm. even like the ground plane. Yep. So if that could just be enhanced a little bit more and just okay. called out if it's mulch or what. Yep. I think that was a comment Dave yes. should have. Dave, do you have any? You, you get that? I did. Um, and I noticed the applicants taking some good notes too. The uh, and this is maybe a coin flip whether this is something that should come up uh, during this landscaping discussion or when we get to lighting. But we did note that you know, for example, here, um, you know, this is one of your parking lot lights. But then you've obviously got the tree here, and we see that as the tree matures, being a conflict. So I don't know if one needs to move over the other. Or we, okay. We've we've also addressed that okay. in the sort of plans that we'll talk okay. to you on that. Yeah, we we we. we go. As you pointed it out, uh, we, we moved that slightly so there's no interferences. Now, when we, if we can go back and just look at the layout and your layout of your parking lot, our ordinance says when there's 10 or more spaces in a row, we need to have end cap islands on both ends of the parking. And you've got them on one end, your end cap islands, but you don't have them on the other end of the row. It does say that in the it ordinance, does. unless I'm not reading it right. Yeah. So I guess that's just a comment if, that, if that's something we want right. to allow or not. But our ordinance does say they're supposed to have an end cap islands on both ends. And, and, and the reason the reason we're showing that, it, it, we, we, you're, you're exactly right, mm -hmm. but we, we try to almost double up the central islands yeah. like that to try and create a corridor. Right. So, so I think as far as the amount of landscaping materials, we'll probably have enough in there to do both ends. You that do. we'd be taking it away from the center, and, right. and, and, and so so we chose to try and create that corridor down through there. And right, so. I understand that it consolidate, and you're actually right. going to get something growing better than just small mm. little islands here and there. But it's something that I just want to bring up to everybody. That is a requirement, so we just have to kind of understand. <coughs> Sometimes it's even traffic control, you know, it. for safety and a lot. They'll do that too. It's just a comment, but I just want to bring that up to everybody. How we want to, you know, what how we feel about that. 
That's a good catch, and um, I I would advocate that you know we continue to require those uh, those end islands because Sue's absolutely right. It's not just an aesthetic enhancement, but it is a, a good traffic control enhancement. It further deters you know vehicles that are circulating through the through the site from from cutting the corner too too closely and potentially clipping a, a parked car. Um, I know we require that in, in all the new parking lots that we've had built in my tenure, and I think that's a, a good design feature to, to continue on with. So are we talking four? Four end caps? Certainly one, two, Six. three, four. He wants to take some of the landscaping out of the center and put them off in those end caps. Oh, I don't know if we said that. I, yeah, I agree. Well, well, I, mean, well, I know. We, yeah, because I mean, we, we basically doubled up oh, on planning in, in those areas. Sure. Trying to meet the intent of the ordinance. I get it. So. So if you'd rather have spread out, it's okay. It's uh, this is a landscaping design deviation that would be up to the planning commission. Um, I've it does look nice. There's no doubt about it. I just need to bring it up for everybody to understand. We also have our ordinance rules, but it, it is nice. It's just something to talk about. Also for moving down the road for future developments. Mm -hmm. We have more than would be required if we had those end caps in. Right. Yeah. So we're not trying to get away from that. We get it. Snow plowing. Right. It's going to look nice coming from the building. If you walk from the building down to the field, just it's nice. create a boulevard. Effect. Yeah, there's no I doubt about it. Rather have it more like a parking lot. We'll yeah, do it. We, we can move, move the condensed yeah. stuff down. Flip the coin. We're good either way. What do you guys want? Yeah. So you're taking like what you would have to do from a design perspective is the the east west boulevard. You'd take the center portions out. Yeah, they're just that open and stick them over on the end. Yes, I think that'd be fine. Right. What what we've done is we've doubled up. Yeah. You know, these areas. That's why it's so, so dark. It's yeah. We, right. We we literally doubled the amount of planning. Right. We we could take some of those plantings and, and put them down here to create that end cap. And then, well, the well, on the, on the other ones too. Yeah. Right. Right. Down yeah. There, right there. That's fine. Do you know that? That's so we should, yeah, whichever you would rather. But it's, but it's going to decrease the value of the design. I, I, why, I, maybe I'm missing. Why does that have to be one or the other? Well, right, 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 right now, we've got, as far as the number of plantings that would be required for the whole curb islands like that, we've got them basically concentrated in these areas. So if, if you told us that you wanted us to put end caps here and here, we would essentially take probably about half these plantings put them down here. And you said, that curve. You said a whole big yeah. island and then yeah. a bunch of little islands throughout the parking lot. So you'd have islands up here and right. islands up here right. and islands up there. And so you'd have smaller pieces right. like a Myers parking lot instead of a boulevard right. back there. There's less landscaping. Yeah. Okay. But again. I think you'd still have that boulevard effect there. Yeah, that's good. That you just so wouldn't have the, you just wouldn't have the, the plantings. Would be hard to see. Right. That's good. Land, but. It's just curves. Are you know? Either way. What do you like? I think we need the end caps. Yeah, I think we have, should stick with the, what the ordinance called for. Yeah. The, the Navy said the site was over parked anyway, so yeah. we lost a few parking spaces. <coughs> yeah, so there's not fine. In terms of meeting minimum parking requirements, that's a true statement. Um, from an operational standpoint, um, I'm not hearing objections necessarily from the from the applicant. It's, it's really a snow plowing issue. It's we'll put them yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll add the end caps and, and make the meet the ordinance for the landscaping in those new end caps. No problem. We'll lose the elements. We'll, we'll keep the there, but we may not have Yeah. <laughs> we'll meet the end cap requirement. Okay. Dave, do you understand it enough if it comes your way? I do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions on parking lot landscaping or comments? about the perimeter landscaping. So this is, again, part of that overall discussion of, of, of buffering the, um, not just the parking lot. I mean, perimeter landscaping, when we're talking about the parking lot, um, buffering it from neighboring property owners and from the road. Um, what the applicant certainly is providing some buffering along the south side of the, the parking lot here. Um, but for the most part, along the, the east and the west side of the parking lot, I think they're looking to take advantage of the existing vegetation uh, to satisfy the, the buffering intent for a, uh, a surface parking lot. They're asking that rather than they plant you know, new vegetation around, that they take advantage of the vegetation that's already there. Well, I, I 
i think at the last meeting i said as much as you can leave alone you should leave alone in my opinion particularly that area of the township if we were down on m59 we you know we'd have to talk about what part are we leaving alone and what aren't we but i would like to see it left as natural as possible and i think everything is screened i think you know did great on the perimeter except i believe when we're driving up and down um is that old 23 right there right we will be looking at the parking lot i mean there is a requirement from a public road looking into the site that we're supposed to screen the parking area okay that's in our ordinance i like all the natural stuff but i know that you've added a, a series of maple trees but that frontage there you've got a ton of maple trees and you've got evergreens but i do know for our ordinance we're not to look at a parking lot from a public road and we will because we'll look right you know through the trunks so we don't have any low ground plane stuff unless i'm missing something so you want low ground plantings in the parking lot in front of it to screen it we do have a requirement now if you can say how you're doing it and i'm missing that you're up 10 feet taller up on you know old 23 looking down I just again I just want to point out that is a requirement I'm not seeing that we would not look at the parking lot from that road we're, we're using existing existing plantings up here and we're we basically adding additional plantings you yep. know, here you are so which areas are you where you're adding those plantings? additional plantings on either side of your boulevard entrance are maple trees right so those are basically a trunk with foliage up above and so the ground plane, when you're looking at the lot, we're going to see it. We're going to look underneath. You're saying you want the little hedge row right here, is what you're saying? I'm not saying where to put it, but I'm saying that we do have a requirement to screen so you can't see the parking. Just as a comment. I, I think everything else is great. You've gone all the way around. It's just, again, pointing out one of our requirements. You should not be able to see a parking area from a public way. I know, Dave, you've got a comment that it's a quite a distance away. Yes. We'll, just, we'll, we'll move some of the stuff we put out by the road and we'll change it and we'll put it on the parking lot. I mean, I, again, if you'd like it closer to the parking lot instead of up by the road, then we'll move it. Wherever you want to put it is fine, especially because you're thinking if you ever had to increase right. your parking. I don't want you to have to put well, something in and remove it. Some out here, but again, well, let's be clear. I mean, what you're putting along hole 23 would count toward your green belt requirement yeah. Yeah. and i don't know that we necessarily want to rob from one requirement to fulfill another no i'm just saying that was part of our mm -hmm. i mean if we put big trees out by the road mm -hmm. that was kind of our thought but that's okay we can we change those to evergreen if you want but those out by the road if that would be one big put a road it's just it's just yeah. a row ahead just not a big deal it's I, a, think. I think it calls for a three foot edge. We'll put a three foot edge on the end cap of the parking lot. It's not it's just a hedge. Yeah. Is that what you have better trees? Yeah, it'd be real good. <coughs> All right. Current vegetation that's there already makes it difficult to see, so but painting on raw edges is but definitely. They're going to clear all that out when they just do that. The road. Just the row. Okay. That's just it. Ahead. Everything else is covered. We'll put a hedge in. It's okay. All right. Don't, don't talk them out of it. <laughs> all right. Detention, retention area landscaping. So that in our ordinance talks about a whole series of things, you know, to put around the pond. And I know we talked about that before, and you've got very um, natural looking. You're talking about like kind of like a rain garden or a wet, a seed mix, which is lovely, and I think it's really appropriate. I don't think it makes sense to put shrubs here and there. What I do think makes sense is just to bring some trees around it just a little bit. There's a requirement for trees and shrubs and a whole bunch of stuff. You've got that ground plane that I think is really suitable for that design, but I think you should add just a few trees more, just to soften it. And you've got one off to the um, west, too. Yeah. Up in there. That yeah. one there is more of a, I mean, that yeah. really is a rain garden. Okay. So, so that's why we weren't trying to put any vegetation. We've got the vegetation behind it. Okay. That this is going to have more of the natural plant. Which is great. So, so I guess you know, adding can but we didn't really feel sure that there's enough room in between there to right but plus that's you know they're going to be popping snow and, stuff and push it through. down into there yeah so i mean okay the landscape that we would put in there would not be in i would so okay i recommend that you just add a couple trees in that area just to soften it because it's going to be basically you guys when you think of it it's going to be a rolling down hole and it's going to be full of native, but just try to kind of bring in that nature that you've got on site through the areas. 
You don't have to go crazy, like no shrubs, all that. Just try to bring your nature sure. through so all of a sudden we just don't have holes with yeah. nothing in it. Well, yeah. It's just kind of meeting you part way on the requirement. You guys fine with that? Okay, good with that. All right, yeah. great. Item F, screening of the residential district. This will be the stuff to the west. Can I go back to just one last thing and then yeah. you <laughs> The grading, or I think I just want to talk about the overall site grading because we're talking about your detention ponds. So your grading plan, if we could call that up, you've got a swale system. And I just want to understand it. Sure. So that everybody gets what's going on. Uh, it's on grading, like 19, I just needed to find the page number. I think it's like yes, 20 or something. It starts on 19 and then it zooms in from there. Twenty-one. Yeah. Yeah, twenty-one is perfect. So, kind of walking through your system, if you can just kind of explain how it works with the swales, because when I look at the swales, the grading, there's like less than there's less than half a percent fall in your swales. So, is it just kind of like the water's just going to? How's that work? Well. With, with, with dish design and stuff like that, you can actually get down to about a quarter percent. Okay, that's about where you're at. Yeah. And, and so, so basically, yeah, it, it's going to come down. The, the uh, fields are going to have tile through them, and it will we'll discharge out into the uh, the swales. Okay. And the swales are designed so, so that the water is going to come down, basically work its way down. And then we have the uh, it's the filtering pond down here, and then go yep. to the main tension pond. There. But, but yeah, it is pretty much minimal slope so that we don't have to dig this pond. Sure, it's so deep. As well, right. So, so that's what we're trying to do. That, it gets, you know, when you get down in here, that's, that's the way it's, you know, a couple feet deep, I think. Probably what's coming in here is actually a little deeper than that. Right. But, but yeah, we're trying to maintain that minimum minimum slope, and it's, it's not like a parking lot where you're trying to get 1% with, with, with a grass ditch and stuff like that. Most of the time we're designing down to, you know, quarter percent to okay. 30 percent of that. Because so. your one parking lot is draining into that. Correct. And Correct. so you're going to take the water from the parking lot and kind of put it into this well that's going to kind of just set there. Well, kind of it, it will serve as a natural, I mean, the grass will serve as a natural filter through that, too. Yep. It's going to slow it down. And, okay. and some of it will perk into the ground. I mean, that's okay. what we're hoping for. It's, as much will perk into the ground as possible, but it will get away as, as it works its way down. At that, at that minor amount. Okay. I just wanted to make sure because I'm used to seeing at least, you know, on, a, on grass, it's always 2%. If, if you're trying to... Get, the water. Keep it so that nothing stays, stays there. Oops, I'm sorry. We'll just put the place pointed up. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, if, if in, in a regular ditch situation like that, yeah, tip, typically it's you know quarter percent to half percent. Okay. That, that there, so. okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. No problem. Uh, item F: Screening of residential districts. So we've. I'll jump in. We've touched on this a little bit uh, through the overall discussion. Um, but yes, the applicant has, um, as we mentioned, repeatedly moved the entire site over approximately 80 feet uh, to the east to create more of that, uh, that screening and that buffering potential. And in so doing, has uh, preserved a lot, you know, 80 feet more worth of the existing vegetation in through here. Uh, and has also offered to uh, fill in some of these gaps that we mentioned earlier with some additional uh, spruce trees. Um, the rest of the site to the east, to the south, and, and to the far west through this panhandle here, everything would have effectively remain untouched. Um, and there is some, some pretty tall vegetation through there. So what the applicant is asking for the most part is to, uh, along with the enhancements along this west side, to allow them to leave the existing vegetation to, to thrive on and, uh, and, and not disturb it by planting uh, new landscaping perimeter screening. Okay. Questions, comments? <coughs> You're fine with it? I'm fine with it. Mm -hmm. Joe? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, item G, general, general site landscaping. We do have a requirement that in addition to all these other categories of landscaping, you provide uh, another 25% above and beyond. Again, it's uh, they're asking that they be credited for that by way of preserving a lot of the existing vegetation to remain. 
you're only grading what 24 acres of 96. So great mission accomplished. Yep. Great. Yeah, it's, it's great. Okay. Um, Dave, you got some general landscape comment. Plant schedules need to specify minimum. We talked about that. Wherever they're required to be, landscape ordinance descriptions on the plan should match the plan details. Um, regarding dumpster location, we have the option of requiring screening. So they are proposing a dumpster uh, with materials to match the face brick of the building. The Planning Commission does have the option of requiring uh, uh, some landscaping around that dumpster enclosure to further um, soften and enhance the look of the dumpster enclosure, but it's a Planning Commission call. Could you enlarge that so those in the room can see where it's located? Page 10 is a better. Page my own. 15. 10. Right. So it's actually integrated right up against the building. Yeah. I'm fine with it the way it is. Are you guys fine with it? I'm fine with it, David. Fine. All right. Good. Okay. Um, sidewalks and pathways. We talked about this last time. Just just internal is all we need to talk about. Talk a little bit about the lighting. Um, so you've taken the field lighting out totally. Dave, what would you like us to determine? So we're left with the parking lot lighting and presumably some uh, some wall packs around the the building for security reasons. Um, the photometric plan that was submitted, um, as best we could tell, satisfies our requirements for site illumination. Um, typically what we see is a table that says what the average to min ratio is, and there's certain minimums that have to be uh, met at certain areas of the site. There's a minimum that has to be met at the site's main entrance. There's a, a minimum that has to be met at the entrance to the building. Um, the photometric plan that we saw didn't appear to include that, so as a condition of approval, what we're recommending is that the applicant provide that table that we usually see uh, to, to confirm for us that those minimum and those average averages have been met. But we are zero at all the property lines. Yes. And I, I think, think that's so. easy to obtain because you're so far from the property lines. Right. <laughs> and they're all, the light fixtures are only 20 foot high. So, okay. so we have shorter than average light fixtures at 20 feet. So they're, they're not LEDs. high up in the air. Yep, they're LEDs. <laughs> we talked about timers. Was there any thought on... Uh, or were we talking about ball field timers or were we talking about parking lot timers? Well, I know we were talking about if they were going to illuminate the fields, uh, would we want those lights to have to get turned off at a certain time of night, whether the girls were done playing or not, but that's obviously a moot point now. Uh, I can't recall if we talked about timers on the parking lot lights. I know we often do. I mean, you need some lighting for security purposes. Yeah, just, again, you know, half an hour if the facility closes an hour, which, you know, be 10 or 11 o'clock there in the wintertime. And light the entrance at night, type of thing, the doorways. Yeah, a photo bench, you know, usually on a photo cell to come on, you know, and right. the use a timer to turn them off so not running all night. Right. Absolutely. That's fine. I think one of the things we asked for was they, they provided a lot of great information on the lighting but almost uh, killed us with the details. What would help us is just one nice uh, rendering of here's the light pole, here's the stanchion, here's the height, here's the color, um, just to confirm what we know to be a 20-foot light pole. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Circle it on the branch. Okay. Kind of drew a line around the... 20 foot pole line. Okay. I'd put a box around. As I mentioned, maybe, there, maybe we missed it in all the other great information that was provided. <laughs> okay, so fixture height, we just talked about that. They're 20 foot, required to be 25. 25. Um, you're proposing 20, which is great. Fixture type, are they all full cutoff fixtures, everything, even the wall packs? Yep. Dave, what are you looking for on that? Just the wall pack comment? The wall pack on it. Yeah, those would be the same. Those be the same thing as the parking lot, just a flat LED, full cut off. Full cut off. They're not called cut off anymore. They go back to the old thing. They're the same essence. Every LED that I've seen, they're all they're all dark sky. Okay. 
they're directionally from the commission. Correct. For an old timer like me, can you just call him cut off? And yes. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, water supply and disposal comments, Dave. If I think so they're not uh, connecting to. Well, they couldn't. There is no municipal water up in this area, but uh, they are not connecting to the municipal sewer spur. That's along Townley Road. They're not coming anywhere near that. So they are proposing uh, uh, well and septic. Um, so our our DPW. Uh, because they're not connecting to municipal system, doesn't doesn't have a whole lot of input on it. Uh, they would be required to get the proper permitting from the Livingston County Health Department for the well and the septic. Um, okay. It's worth noting because I know the question came up early of of why are they going to irrigate these fields, and if so, are they going to draw down the aquifer? Uh, it's worth repeating that these are synthetic fields; they're the the field turf or whatever the name brand is. Um, so obviously, you don't need to irrigate uh, synthetic surface, um, nor do you need to put pesticides and herbicides. On it, um, so with the exception of the you know the, the bathrooms and the sinks, uh, this wouldn't be a huge draw um, on the especially given its seasonal nature. It wouldn't be a huge draw on the groundwater. Um, probably not a lot more than a, a few houses. Okay, walls and fences. Typical fencing around the softball fields. So yeah, just typical fencing. Yeah. Use the black vinyl, the, the vinyl, the black vinyl coated uh, chain link. Yeah, the black to make it disappear. Okay. 17 to the top of page 18. We're on uh, architecture. Um, did you bring some materials? I thought I saw you lugging in a bag and a half. Oh, I brought a bag and that's the rendering. The rendering is sandpaper, so it should be close to the vehicle. And so, you guys can hear me. You, you guys have a rendering in your pack. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yep. obviously, it's supposed to be an all brick building. You have your little metal panel. And the best part probably is just building the end wall, which is uh, uh, like a skylight material like cat wall. So only like universities and field houses have it. So because you can't put windows everywhere, you can't get glare. So on the end, so obviously it's brick, uh, you know, with the columns that you have vertically in your fire view ordinance. But this will all be a you know, material that's like a skylight material, it's like glass, so that you're actually play ball indoors with no need for shade and blinds and things like that. So that's really on each end of the facility will have that. Obviously so there's glass, which you can standard gray glass that just to get with you know tinted glass you kind know, of you know nothing really special about some gray glass here. <laughs> um, again this is a nice um, just a nice chocolate brown uh, brick with some tan highlights in it. We have a nice natural tan brick. We actually, uh, John and I just used the same brick on the University of Michigan. So it's a, you know, it's a first class color combination that's stood the test of time. We, you know, the facilities with lots of things have. So for that, a um, little block, a little accent block, and you know, uh, a little split face block with some tan, some brown. Some three color combinations kind of blend together to get one seamless look, but as your ordinance requires, each material has to be slightly different. So even though the split face block, the goal would be that it would blend in with the two materials. So that if you have a close, it would be different, but from afar, it would, it would read as it would look like seven materials that are somebody put together with the jigsaw. So the goal is to blend together. And again, the goal would be an insulated panel, again, not for uh, Technical, but you know, most uh, industrial buildings, uh, I call it the bubble insulation on the inside, a you know, crank panel on the outside that you can then This will have a, what I call a pre insulated panel, so a permanent finish on the inside and a permanent finish on the outside, like private. Uh, but without being private, so you never have to replace the air to go So that will be this inset material. Uh, and, and the feature that has the metal panel will be a permanent kind of finish. You know, but, I guess 20 year, 25 year paint. That's just the flat surface of it. Um, it's just, you know, be a few places that need a, a flat metal detail. The sun through so like for flashing, you don't want it to be a piece of flat material would be the same color, but flat. Uh, same profile. Looks like a minor deviation in the percentages, but it's 
certainly an attractive looking building. Correct. So uh, uh, for every building elevation, north, south, east, west, they are asking for a uh, planning commission waiver of a strict application of the building materials requirements. Uh, they are going a little bit over on the uh, the split face block uh, on, on on the elevations. Um, but what the planning commission would need to determine is whether the, the overall design of the building satisfies the intent of our building materials and architectural requirements. Um, and if so, then the planning commission could allow the deviations that the applicant is requesting. Comments? I think the building is very attractive. And, and I think the uh, percentages of building material are fine. They look really nice on there. They're very, they're very close. Yeah. It's the nicest industrial building I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's one of the nicest designs. Yeah. Architectural building. Yeah. It's very attractive. Very attractive. I would be fine with their I, minor request for deviation. I agree. I, 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 I agree. It's really nice. That would be one of the determinations that the Planning Commission would be making this evening if they choose to take any action on this uh, You'd like proposal. Included in the motion? Uh, uh, or I think because like the fact that we, not of a head we just saw something of a consensus on that one. That would be fine. Um, same with the concession stand. It's a great looking concession stand. Yeah. Um, I think we're over to page 19. So we just covered all those facade materials and those deviations. Have we covered them all, Dave? I believe. I think so. We did note that signage is under separate permit. That's uh, administrative. Um, if, if and when we get to that point. So just to be clear to the applicant, the signage is not getting approved this evening. Uh -huh. no, but we tried to give a good indication. Yes. Of what we were heading for. We'll put something at the entrance, like a little monument sign with some black poles, and then something on the building to identify that you came to the right place. Yeah. Just get with Dave or take a look yeah. at the ordinance, and Absolutely. you probably have no issue complying. <clears throat> okay, we're at the bottom of 19 and 20. We got our consultants' uh, comments and reviews, our fire marshal uh, comments. Yes, uh, the fire marshal's comments came in after we submitted our packets. So we got them early this week, and I printed out a copy and gave it to each of you. Um, the fire marshal is recommending approval, subject to his kind of his standard contingencies about the lockbox and uh, and the location of the fire suppression panel and, and things that he could uh, work out with the applicant. Um, uh, on the on the first submittal for this plan, uh, fire marshal had some concerns about circulation through the parking lot. Uh, those concerns have been addressed with the revisions. Okay. Uh, any other? Any other questions, comments? Anything back up in the special use section? Hours of operation, just for the public's benefit, they were included in there. Would you like yeah. to share them with them? And sure, you read them again. Sure. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So again, um, you know, the indoor facility again is 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 in October through April. Again, as the weather turns bad. Um, again, it's you know Monday through Friday. Obviously, kids are in school, so it's just a late afternoon. Uh, and then home, so they get their homework done like about 9:30. So again, just enough to, to be courteous. Okay, oh, can, can, can we that. move? Thank you, sir. Uh, no, I was just saying. So it'd be in October through April. Uh, again, kids would be in school. So obviously, then after school, uh, late afternoon through like say 9:30. Again, enough for them to be home and get their homework done and be with families. Um, again, then you more busy on the Saturday and Sundays, uh, more like at 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Again, then you could, you know, batting cages and things like that. More teams can do that. And obviously that would be for school kids. That's probably the best. Uh, outdoor fields, again, would be the opposite. So they'd be, you know, May through coming up here in September. Uh, you know, it's getting cold already. I was hoping it would stay a little warmer longer. But uh, again, uh, uh, same thing uh, Friday afternoons, uh, maybe like a 4 o'clock till about 10 p.m. And then Saturdays and Sundays, uh, 8, 8 to 10. So again, those are your busier, busier days in the summertime. Okay. Anybody have any questions or additional information? I have one comment. Now that we've asked them to add some curbs on the end of the uh, islands on the end of the parking, you may want to have fire marshal review yes. that again. I was thinking Might the same thing. Need dr drivable curbs, maybe be enough. I don't know. Yeah, the, it's a great thought, and uh, the fire marshal will be looking at this. If, if this plan were to get to construction and stamping sets, the fire marshal is going to be taking another look at that time. Okay. And it, just so it's clear, where it will 
because we, we figured there we figured there would be a, a vehicle in those spaces so we'll be eliminating a couple spaces with that curb so it will make those turns so. okay but you will okay. you've eliminated the option of the fifth field correct correct okay correct check the plans page c101 uh, still has the fifth field on it on this set. Uh, page C101. Just a. It's off all of the pages, but that particular one. Okay, I didn't say. Oh, you yeah, messed okay. up. Okay. That's right. I apologize. That's all right. I just something. It needs to be cleaned up. Absolutely. You're off the team. He's off the team. It's not the man. All right. <laughs> yeah, I thought I read where you took it out, and then it yeah. showed up. Any other questions or thoughts for them at this time? No. It's time. Jeff, anything? What would you like to do? I'll make a motion to approve site plan with special land use application number 534 for the turn in two softball complex proposed for parcel situated southwest of the US 23 and Clyde Road interchange conditioned on the following. One, approval of the Township Board of the Special Land Use, Private Recreation Area and CA Zoning District. Two, Modification of the landscape plan as described in the planner's review. Three, modification of the lighting plan as described in the planner's review. Four, detail of proposed bleachers to be added to the plan. Five, compliance with all requirements of the DPW director, fire marshal, township engineer, and on the forthcoming construction plans. And modifications to the um, side, uh, parking lot as discussed before, uh, with the end caps. I think that was that's it. That's it. There's some more landscaping. Okay. I'll second. I'll second that. Okay. Um, so we have um, a, a motion to approve site plan with special use application 534 from Commissioner Claney and a second from Commissioner Void. Is there any further discussion? I think we need to add on that modification of the landscape plan as described in the review letter and discussed tonight mm -hmm. because I believe right. Sue hit some additional items. Right. Oh. Like the perimeter screening. All those that are going to be recorded in the minutes. Right. Yeah. The perimeter screening and so forth. Yeah. So yeah. I accept that. Okay. Are you okay no, with that? that? Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. If I may, before the applicant uh, packs up, so the next Township Board meeting is September 1st. Uh, the agenda packet for that meeting has already been finalized. Um, so we will be looking at the uh, September 15th Township Board meeting. So mark your calendars. You, you know you're going to make some bow hunters unhappy. <laughs> Any bow hunters? There's, <laughs> there is, there is an area that hit pretty hard in the fall. So, all right, thank you very much and um, welcome. Oh, yeah, thank you. I'll give them just a minute to clean this up. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. <clears throat> All right, I think we'll move on to item nine. Call to the public, anyone? Okay, Ready? plug in. Uh, yeah. The, the I'm not, not sure how that all works. So, okay.
that's not showing. Um, good evening. Um, my name is Travis Walk. I reside at 9742 Clyde Road, which is the property directly that abuts uh, to the west. And um, I guess first I'd like to um, say thank you in appreciation for uh, these gentlemen and what they've done so far in basically adhering to um, what they had said the, the first time about being good neighbors and listening to um, the the public and the people who live there by you know uh, foregoing with the lights and that's a um, a pretty big deal for us um, and so thank you for um, conceding on that. Um, and I'm not sure if this is going to work. I don't see any icons up there, but yeah. We should just be looking at whatever's on your screen. Yeah, it's for some reason it's yeah, not. How do I get it back? Oh, I see. Okay. Um, so I guess what I wanted to point out was my one of my concerns is that I haven't heard any mention about um, when we're talking about the buffer zone um, the ordinance that specifically talks about the buildings that are over 60,000 square feet and it's my understanding that this building is about almost 65,000 square feet is that correct yes yeah uh, 4.46 shopping centers and other buildings over 60,000 square feet um, and this is at 445. Two, screening. Screening of the site mechanical units and loading areas shall be provided as follows. And it talks about the screen buffer of buildings over 60,000 square feet abuts land zoned or used for residential use. The screening is intended to completely obscure the view of buildings, vehicular areas, and other features of the commercial development from view by adjacent non-commercial properties. In lieu of screening requirements set forth in section 511, landscaping and screening, the following screening requirements shall apply. The minimum width of the buffer shall be 20 feet. Well, it seems like we've got that covered, um, with it being approximately 300 feet. Um, a combination of deciduous and evergreen trees shall be provided in a non-uniform fashion across the full length and width of the buffer for visual screening. Deciduous trees shall be a minimum of 3-inch caliper. Evergreen trees shall have a variety of heights with 50% being a minimum of 6 feet in height, 30% being a minimum of 8 feet in height, and 20% being 10 feet or greater in height. All sizes are at time of planting, and trees shall be placed 15 feet on center, um, et cetera, et cetera. And then it talks about within three years having it completely obscure the view of the building. And so my concern is, is that leaving, leaving the existing buffer zone up there on that northwest corner and that, it, that thicket of trees through there, I don't know if you'd actually classify them as trees. Um, if I can show you. If you can kind of see that, um, there's not really a trunk there. These trees shoot up five, six, seven, eight trees that are, you know, eight little shrubs. They, they grow underground. I think they're box elder trees. I haven't had a forester out there to look at it yet, but I was wondering if the township might consider um, having a forester come out, identify the trees, tell us what kind they are, because in the wintertime, they all drop their leaves. and. Right now, I can see, well, in the wintertime, I can see from my property, I can see all the way down to the stop sign, you know, at Old 23 and Clyde Road. So in the wintertime, when those trees drop the leaves, you know, I'll be looking at a building. Unless, you know, we're adhering to uh, this section uh, of the ordinance that particularly talks about the buildings over 60,000 square feet and we're putting in the evergreens and the other deciduous trees, you know, the combination mixture. Um, so I don't know if that's something that the, the township can do to have a forester come out there and let us know what type they are and if, in fact, it would actually adhere or meet the requirements that are set forth in the ordinance already. Um, I guess that's basically it. I just I really don't want to see a building in the middle of winter time. As nice as the building is, um, if it's completely obscured, that's great. You know, it'll help with the lighting. You know, it'll help with the noise and, and everything else. So I, I'm, you know, to tear out the existing shrubbery, not asking for that. I'm, uh, you know, I think it's great. Leave what they can, and maybe just on the um, the closest part to the building. 
you know, the, the eastern side of that, maybe for 50 feet or so. Put some evergreens in there, you know. E even though it calls for having it in the in the ordinance, it calls for having it run the full length of the property line, which is about 625 feet from the front of the road. Um, not asking for that. Just enough where it comes in and obscures the building and the parking lot. Um, maybe 300 feet from the road. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fellow, to 368 Metro Court. I was up a little while ago. I just want to apologize if I misquoted the um, Maybe I wasn't there for the conversation. I had some confusion. Maybe it was confusing because I'm always up here talking about the gas station. The gas station was in a six foot tall burn. Could you, could you speak? Actually, Actually, I need sorry. you to speak into the mic. <laughs> we can't record it. Oh, we'll back up just a little bit, and then we'll okay. be okay. <laughs> He won't record um, it otherwise. Okay, I'll start over. When my husband was speaking with Dave, they might have been a little conversation, confusion, because we're always talking about the gas station. My husband was talking about the KFC. I did go look at the drawings, and they are uh, listed for KFC at being three feet. The drawing uh, shows that it's a... If it is three feet, I'm just wondering why the gas station is going to be six feet. It is along the same stretch of road. I'm just considering shouldn't there be some sort of uniformity so that it looks better. Because three feet uh, is not high enough to block the homes. I just show you in those photos. You can clearly see those homes. And uh, they're back hose and stuff tore down the existing trees. It's completely dirt and gravel on one half of the property. I'm just wondering if the company is going to put in something else to fill that space in so that way those homes are protected. I'm not against AFC. I think it's, I think it's great, but um, that I know construction noise and all, and all that. I just want to protect the homeowners because I am one of them. And uh, the drawing, I did pull it up, and it shows that it's a closed loop curb. The drawing I gave you, I shouldn't say the drawing, but the photograph I gave you, it shows that it's a driveway heading towards the back. And that's a concern of mine. I know that they're going to, up front, they're going to continue a driveway to attach all the uh, new buildings that are coming in. But I'm wondering why the drawing shows it as a closed loop in the back and showing an exit heading right towards that house. If there's going to be something built back there or if that was an oversight when the curbs were being put in. And um, I, think, I think that was it. I just wanted to clarify and apologize if we misquoted Dave. Okay? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Hi there. So can you hear me? Uh, if you speak into the mic, we can. Okay. I'm Fred Meisterfeld, and I, I'm her husband of the 2368 Matthew Court. And uh, I was the guy who went out there on uh, that one night, and I talked to the construction workers. And uh, they told me, basically, that they didn't know there was any will. You know, and I can't believe that uh, a guy laying cement for 20 years wouldn't know that he's not allowed to do that. But anyway, so I came and I complained to David. So he said, yeah, he knew all about it. So my question is, what was done about it? Well, we don't answer questions during call of the public right now. You can ask Dave afterwards if you'd like to, after uh, the meeting. I was just curious because I was just wondering, because he was saying that they always support the laws, they uphold the laws. Now, I called the uh, Livingston County Sheriff's Department. <clears throat> Excuse me, Livingston County Sheriff's Department. And they said basically that um, their function is not to, to uphold the, uh, Hartland's uh, nuisance laws, and that's up to you guys. So I'm wondering, how do I uh, deal with that? All right. So, and I also want to uh, apologize to David if I got something wrong. I thought, I thought the idea was as he was saying that there was supposed to be a six foot wall running across the back, like for example, what's over at uh, Little Caesars and the auto parts store and everything else. You know, so it's kind of strange that you need a six foot wall then nothing with cars' headlights coming down the driveway shining on people's homes. And then this little bump behind some trees, which really doesn't make any sense. So I just want to tell you about that one, too. Anyway, okay. so I should talk to him afterward. Yeah. Well, because last time I talked with him, I, I didn't feel like I was really getting truthful answers to stuff. So um, I would like to not get into that during the call of the public. If you'd like to speak with Dave after the meeting, that would be fine. I think we have differences of opinion, and we're not going to get into them at a call of the public. All right, that's fine. Okay. I'm not, I'm not trying to cause trouble. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, 
Hi, my name is Ed Grenfell, and uh, I'm uh, here to represent the Tri-City uh, County uh, Softball uh, League. Uh, apparently, I got my question answered. Uh, this softball complex must be a girls complex and not a softball complex. So it won't be any of us seniors or uh, any of the leagues that are playing at tags then. This is strictly girls softball. Is that my understanding? Mm -hmm. Okay. The only other question I would have is I do live at Clyde Road in uh, in Cullen. Uh, and just up from me is uh, where this proposal is uh, set to be built. And whoever did the traffic study has never been at Clyde Road and Old 23 at uh, 8 o'clock or 5 o'clock in the evening because they're lined up in every direction. In this complex, if I understand it correctly, uh, when it's at full capacity, you're going to have well over 200 people there. Uh, and you're, if you travel north on 23 there, that's 55 mile an hour zone, and you're coming into a blind curve just before this uh, entrance to this complex. And I guess I'd be a little concerned about that. But uh, that's all I have to say. All right. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Good evening. Uh, my name is Jeff Castle. I live on uh, 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 Cowan Road. Um, one question I, I didn't hear it mentioned this evening. Um, when these facilities are run, typically during a game, there's announcements or things like that. Um, I'm grateful that the lights were removed. I was wondering if there's been any discussion about a speaker system. Um, recently moved here uh, earlier this year. Um, from a house not too far from an establishment similar to this and all day long especially in the summertime kids are loving uh, playing playing ball you're gonna hear announcers calling out their name fun for the families that are attending the event terrible for the neighbors around trying to have a nice pleasant uh, afternoon and all you hear is this um, I would like that to be addressed. I don't know if it was in the plans. Yeah, there is no announcer. There's no announcer. It's prohibited. They're not proposing one. Wonderful. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Anyone else? Come forward. Thank you. <laughs> My name yes, is Johnny Eslin, 4488 West Bristol Road in Flint. And I would just like to say that I work all over the place. I work with a lot of boards and a lot of different planning departments, and this is by far, if not the best, it's one of the best I've ever worked with in terms of the way we deal with it, also protecting the public also. I just want to all right. offer that. Thank you. Thank you. Good My name is Jim Wallace. I live at uh, uh, 4849 Cullen Road just off of Clyde. Uh, <clears throat> my, uh, my biggest concern was the traffic problem. Uh, my second concern would be the lighting. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't know whether they're going to uh, put lighting in like at Myers where it's uh, environmentally friendly, where they, they keep the glare down. Mm -hmm. uh, this, is, uh, this is a concern I have, but uh, I'm also the ex-league director of the Heartland Senior Softball League. A tag sports complex, and uh, you're talking. You're talking a lot of people. You're talking uh, four fields. You're talking 15, uh, 15 players a side. That's 30 plus fans. That's a lot of people uh, in this small uh, small area as far as traffic flow. Uh, do we know who's going to be responsible for putting up a traffic light or? Or who's in charge of that? I mean, we have a lot of questions that uh, once this thing goes through, it's obviously it's a beautiful complex and everything, but uh, you know, the uh, the egress. I'm I'm just worried about uh, traffic and how that's going to impact uh, that small area there, unless something's done to improve it. That's all I got to uh, say. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. Can I see? No. <laughs> Please. Hi, my name is Renee Feek. I live off of Fern Drive um, to the west off of Clyde. 
Um, my only concern is I think it's a beautiful complex. I hope you come to Heartland. My concern is the location and the variance in the zoning because it is zoned agricultural. Um, Heartland spent a lot of time on their master plan trying to keep a lot of the development to the 59 corridor where it is zoned for that use. Um, the area up off of Clyde and going to the west all the way into Osceola was proposed to be kept agricultural and more rural. So my concern, like Kim, is the traffic and the amount of cars coming through during the school year when you have school in session. In the fall, we have Spicers. We also have the Partialville Cider Mill, and there is a lot of traffic. So softball fields in the summer, and then in the winter with the sports, and believe me, my children, soccer, they play baseball. You know, it's something they enjoy. I don't begrudge anybody enjoying the facility. My concern is the amount of traffic. People speed along Clyde, it is horrible. We've come up, we've talked to the blonde girl back there. I don't know, I remember her name. We've been to the County Road Commission to try to get something done about the speed limit through the first stretch in the Blind Hills. There's been many accidents and several deaths. So our concern is you're bringing, I know he coaches for Howell, I believe. Is that correct? You coach in Howell? Oh, okay. I thought somebody coached in Howell. Mm -hmm. We were concerned about the kids coming up. Mm -hmm. through Howell, you know, to come to the facility, which is awesome for them. But we concerned about the increase in the traffic, the fact that people drive 70 miles an hour down Clyde Road, even though it's 55. Mm -hmm. But we're concerned about the amount of traffic, and I don't know when they did the traffic studies, because if they're not done during the school year, where you have the normal traffic, or in the fall where you have the cider mills open, and those are just seasonal. There is an issue right at Old 23 and Clyde every morning, every evening. Um, there's a lot of increased traffic also because they're going all the way through to Lats and now that it's paved and to get to the 96 interchange. Mm -hmm. So we want you to think about the amount of traffic and the increase and maybe if there's another piece of property that might be better suited for the amount of traffic that this is gonna bring in. I mean, we don't want you to lose a business and a tax base, but we're concerned about the non-conforming use because it's supposed to be a more rural area according to your master plan that you guys really worked on five years ago. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Correct. Anyone else? Master plan. Master plan. Oh, good evening. Good evening. <coughs> Stuart Oldford, Jr., 5395 Cullen Road, Fenton, Michigan. Uh, to the commission, um, I know that there are uh, standard operating procedures for um, rezoning meetings and notification of adjoining landowners, but I would urge you in the future to consider um, a signage on the site or, or something like that. I, I can tell you that uh, if we polled the people that will be directly affected by this development, um, while they may not meet the letter of the law as far as getting uh, notification directly from the township. Um, I think if that site had a sign out in front of it, proposed rezoning, you'd probably need a bigger room. And I think that's, that's the job of the commission to consider something like that. <clears throat> as a former applicant, I think I heard Dave say that that the Livingston County Road Commission has jurisdiction out of old US 23. I'm flabbergasted that they did not require a, a deceleration lane or a left turn lane. And I'll bring that up with uh, Mr. Crane. Um, <clears throat> the lights being removed from the site plan is certainly, um, it, it makes it a more palatable development for myself and I'm sure many other people. Um, I'd like you to consider, if you haven't already, uh, what happens in the future when the applicant, it certainly changed their business model substantially. And when the applicant faces a hardship and needs to consider that revenue base that happens from an evening session, it comes back in front of this commission, pleading a hardship, asking for the lights. Um, 
I don't think that anybody wants to be in that position. Um, the grading, yes, maybe we're only touching 24 of 96 acres, but uh, you all have looked at construction sites and you understand how uh, they have a tendency to spread out a little bit. And I will say if we're giving credit for existing vegetation or existing plant material on the site, who, who supervises um, how much of that gets uh, removed or destroyed during the construction process. I think that it is the um, thought process of, of many uh, developers that, well, if we get caught at that, we'll just plant some more stuff. Okay, so that's a big concern that I have. Uh, one other thing about the site, and, and I haven't had an opportunity, I apologize for being ignorant to this, our living adjacent to the site for 40 of my 50 years, um, there's a low spot on the site that did contain for many, many years a pond. Uh, I fished there. And it seems to be located, to me, looking at the site plan, pretty close to where their septic field is proposed. I don't know if there's been any discussions about that or if I'm wrong and maybe the topography has changed over time. That's a possibility. But uh, I would wish that uh, that would be considered. Thank you very much. Have a right. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, seeing no one else come forward, we will move to item 10, the planner's report. Dave, did you have anything for us this evening? Just a couple of uh, <clears throat> updates on uh, proposals that the planning commission is going to see in the near future. So we have a planning commission meeting on September 10th, and uh, you will most likely be seeing the final plan development plan for the Fiddler Grove project. This is the 25 detached condominiums uh, on the south side of M59 just east of Cullen Road. Um, this will be the Planning Commission and the Township Board's opportunity to look at the development agreement, the master deed, and the uh, bylaws for the site condominium. Uh, we've done, I would think, most of the heavy lifting with the planning of the site plan, and now a lot of it just focuses on memorializing all that with the legal documentation. Um, the uh, uh, Walnut Ridge Estates proposal has been resubmitted, so this is the uh, uh, amendment to the River Church plan development with the uh, 64 single-family homes uh, proposed to be located north of the River Church site. Um, this is one that has been before this planning commission as it moved through the process before. They have revised their preliminary plan development site plan and uh, hope to be back in front of this planning commission for that September 10th meeting. Um, and. The uh, site plan committee and myself and some other township officials are going to be meeting with the Mayberry Homes group on Monday afternoon uh, to discuss their concept plan for the properties that they're acquiring um, on M59 at Pleasant Valley slash Fenton Road. Uh, we're going to get a chance to see the what they have for a concept plan for their uh, intent to develop those properties. Um, so that's what's going to be in front of the planning commission in the, in the coming weeks. Great. Thank you. Time's meeting up. Four o'clock. Um, committee reports. Anybody? Anything? Motion to adjourn, please. So moved. Support. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Thank you. And good evening.